mass of subatomic particles, like electrons, can be found by making use of devices like mass spectrograph. Children, mass of uh, subatomic particles, which are subatomic particles, atom you know, subatomic particles, which are the particles contained in an atom, children? Tell? Electrons. Ah, okay. Electrons. Hmm. Ah, electrons are revolving around the nucleus. Nucleus contains proton and neutron. So, a proton, neutron, electron, such particles are subatomic particles. Okay? And uh, such a particle, we know, which is very small, very small in size, you know. Uh, we cannot uh, see them and uh, see uh, even uh, ordinary microscope cannot be used to find that, find its mass. So, we use mass spectrograph to find the mass of such particle, mass spectrograph. So, uh, you just you know the uh, device used or the method used to find the mass of subatomic particle. No need to study these experiments and all. So, uh, if you see this picture, that what is the benefit of that? You will remember this. A mass spectrograph is like this. So, that is used to find the mass of subatomic particles. Okay, that's all. In a mass spectrogram, a stream of charged particles, like electrons, in rectilinear motion, is subjected to electric and magnetic fields. Due to the effect of the fields, the particles then follow a curved path. Then the radius of the curved part of the particles, which is dependent on the mass of the particle. See children, see. So here uh, you can see how this mass spectrograph is helpful to measure mass of subatomic particles. You can see here an electric field is there and then magnetic field is there. Both are there. Electric field, magnetic field, both are there. And when a particle comes, if it is more massive that, and see electron, electron will bend towards which electric plate, positive plate is there, negative plate is there. So, electron is having negative charge that will bend towards the positive plate. A proton, you know, positive charge. So, it will bend towards negative plate. And how much it bent? The radius of the circular. Now, this is a part of the circle, circular path. This will complete a circle. So, this is the circular path and uh, you can calculate that how much it bend. That depends upon the mass of the particle. More is the mass, more it will bend. So, from that they are calculating, scientists are calculating the mass of subatomic particles. So that is the method, no need to study method, just for uh, keeping that in your mind I explained this, no need to study how we are measuring the mass, just knowing mass spectrograph, it contains both magnetic and electric field, when a particle comes, if it bent more, that is a uh, and that is showing that particle is having more mass like that. So, from the derivations are there, equation is there, from that they calculate the mass of that particle, subatomic particle. Clear children? That's only to study. No need to study this experiment at all. Okay. So, what is used to measure mass of subatomic particles, children? What is used? Spectrograph. Ah, mass spectrograph, yes, that's only needed, okay. ...is observed. From the radius of the path observed, the mass of the particle is estimated. The usage of the unit kilogram is not convenient for measuring the masses of the particles like atoms or molecules. Hence, for measuring the masses of the particles like atoms or molecules, a convenient unit called Unified Atomic Mass Unit, referred to as AMU in short, was established. The symbol of Children, say so these are the uh, subatomic particles, electrons, proton, neutrons. And their masses, you know, even we cannot see it, even small, ordinary microscope also cannot be used to see them. Such a small particle is this. So, expressing its mass in kilogram, 
Uh, it's uh, uh, not practical. Expressing the mass of subatomic particles in kilogram is not practical. So, practically a unit is selected. That is unified atomic mass unit. U, small letter U. Unified atomic mass unit. AMU, which is uh, uh, denoted as AMU. Simply in bracket we write U. U is the unit. 1 AMU. So, they are like that, 2 IMU, mass of subatomic particles are expressed in unified atomic mass unit. This is the mass, this is the unit for expressing mass of very small particles like electron, proton, etc. Okay. Which is the unit, children, to measure subatomic particles? Is it kilogram? Ah, it is unified atomic mass unit. Only to know that. So we studied the um, mass the method. AMU. What? The AMU. Ah, this is AMU. Okay, then we can study what is AMU. Next two. Okay. Unified atomic mass unit is U. One unified atomic mass unit is defined as mass of 1 12th the mass of an isolated atom of carbon 12 isotope. So definition of 1 AMU, this is important. What is AMU? Such question may come. One more question. What is 1 AMU? It is the mass of 1 by 12th mass of isolated atom of carbon 12 at rest and it is in ground states including the mass of electron and we know in an atom it uh, consists of protons and neutrons in the nucleus and electrons are revolving around. And we have to find 1 by 12th mass of that carbon atom. Which carbon atom? C12. To carbon isotope also is there. So, especially it is uh, defined. It is C12 atom we are taking, not C14. C12 atom is taken. So, 1 by 12th mass of isolated carbon 12 atom at rest. And it is also in ground state. That time its mass is considered 1 by 12th mass of carbon 12 atom. And here see mass of the electron also is considered. Mass of the electron even though very very small. 10 to minus 31 like that mass of the electron. Till that mass also is considered. And 1 by 12th mass of that carbon atom. C12 atom. It is uh, one atomic mass unit. So atom mass is compared with the carbon 12th uh, atoms mass 1 by 12th mass of carbon 12 atom which is in ground state and that mass we consider along with the mass of electron so this is the definition for 1 amu 1 by 12th mass of carbon 12 atom rest in and in ground state including mass of the electrons okay you have to study this definition at rest and in its ground state, including the mass of the electrons. It is equivalent to 1.66 into 10 power minus 27 kilograms. Children, this relation very important because while doing problems, we have to convert uh, the quantity may be given in any other unit, but you know, we have to convert that into SI system. So, we should know its conversion. One U unit, how many kilogram? One U, no, one U. One U means one AMU. How much kilogram it is? 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 27 kilogram. Yesterday I told some relations, you know. Uh, one for me, how many meters? I will ask to uh, Ad Adinan. Adinan. TK. One for me, how many meters? Adinan, no answer. Huh? Who will answer? One uh, for me. How many meters? Ten. Huh? Ten. 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 Meters 10 raised to 11 meters. Uh, 1 a 10 raised to 11 meters. Correct answer. Like that, uh, this uh, relation also you study. 
1 amu is 1.66 in the rest minus 27 kilo. See, minus 27. Atoms mass, you know, 1 by 12th mass of carbon atom. That is 1 amu. See, such a small quantity is that. 1.66 in the rest minus 27 kilogram is 1 amu. Understand? Subatomic particles masses are expressed in uh, amu. And its conversion to kilogram is this. Hey, children. The masses of different objects we come across in the universe have a huge variation. The table that follows show the range and the order of the masses of different objects. Okay, just to have an idea or the range of masses that we come across in our uh, universe. You can see we very small particle electron. 10 raised to minus 30, see, among, among us all these uh, bodies, which is having the smallest mass, electron is having the smallest mass, 10 raised to minus 30. Proton is having more mass, 10 raised to 3 times more than that, 10 raised to minus 20. So, you should have an idea of the masses of these particles. Which is smaller, which is smaller, proton or electron mass, which is smaller, children? Electron. Yeah, electron. 10 raised to minus 30. That range you should know. 10 raised to minus 30 kilogram. Kilogram is written at the top. Unit is very important. Whenever you tell the quantity, unit is very important. So, 10 raised to minus 30 kilogram. Proton minus 27 kilogram. And uh, uranium atom. Atom is uh, bigger than that. Minus 25. Kanda. Then it is increasing, its size increasing, human, its uh, maximum is 10 raised to 2 is given, automobile increases, 10 raised to uh, 3, aircraft, 10 raised to 8, moon, 10 raised to 23, earth, earth mass you, you must know, 10 raised to 25 kilogram, see. Milky Way galaxy, sun's mass 10 raised to 30, Milky Way galaxy 10 raised to 41, big, bigger, bigger. That the biggest is shown uh, universe 10 raised to 55 see kilogram universe mass 10 raised to 55 kilogram. So uh, you got the idea the variation in the masses of smallest particles to the biggest one. Like that you can see the variation in masses in length also we have seen that such variation that is shown here. Okay, just to have an idea, children. measurement of time is of utmost importance for us in our day-to-day -day life and even in the history of science. Measuring time gives the chronological order of events that take place and helps in better conception and factual understanding of science. Measuring time is measuring the time interval between two events. For example, in a marathon race, the time interval between the instant of start of the race time measurement it is the time interval between two events At the instant the winner crossing the finish mark is essential to declare a winner in the race the ordinary watches the devices that we normally look at to know time do not help in deciding the winner as the events of two persons crossing the finish mark can vary in a fraction of seconds. To increase the accuracy, we require the time measuring devices that can measure the smallest fraction of a second. So, uh, for time, see in marathon race and all, we cannot use that, uh, our ordinary watches because even fraction of a second difference the person's uh, time may change. So, we have to use a stopwatch. Have you seen stopwatch? In, uh, you see, during the two competitions and all, we usually take stopwatches. In that fraction of a second can be measured. That's why it is used. Not, not minute, not second. Even less than that. The fraction of a second can be measured with the help of a stopwatch. Understand? Measuring time. So actually, we use uh, clocks, watches, etc. to measure time. But in competition and all, we have to use stopwatches.
Okay. The standard SI unit in measuring time. There were so many kinds of time measuring devices used in the past, ranging from the hour glasses, pendulums, sundials, etc., which measure time based on different phenomena. To have the most accuracy in measuring time, now we use an atomic standard of time, which is based on the periodic vibrations produced in a cesium atom. Hence, the clock is also referred to as the cesium clock or the atomic clock. In a cesium clock, the second is taken as the time needed for 9, 1, 9, Children, uh, for, this, uh, for measuring time, we usually use clocks, watches, etc. And, uh, but you know, the actual Actually, one uh, CCM, this is CCM beam tube and in that CCM atom is kept in that and the, the time needed for 9, see, 192, 631, 7 cm vibration, this much bigger number, this much vibrations make actually one second. And why CCM atom is taken for that, this, this much vibration, when it makes, when the transition, that means the transition of electron takes place from two lines. No need to study by heart, just for knowing I am telling all this. Then you will remember CCM clocks are used to measure time. The accurate, most accurate clocks are considered to be CCM 133 atom, that clock. That means this much vibration that will be the same everywhere in the universe, wherever you take America, England or India. See, if that is CCM clocks, this much vibration will make one second. So, it is universally or internationally accepted. Second, one second's definition is this. 9192 vibrations uh, make one second. That much vibration, which atom CCM atom make? That is actually one second. So, CCM clocks are said to be most accurate clocks. Understand? So most accurate clocks are CCM atomic clocks. Why? That's the number of vibrations take in the same time. This much vibrations will make one second. That is not varying. Understand? So that's why that clocks are taken as the most accurate one. CCM clocks are atomic clocks. Same. Same thing. Now I need to study this setup. vibrations of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of cesium-133 atom. The vibrations of the cesium atom regulate the time shown by this atomic clock. Just as the vibrations of the balance wheel regulate the time shown by an ordinary wristwatch, the cesium atomic clock has an accuracy of one second in one million years, or an uncertainty of plus or minus one into 10 power minus 13. The number of seconds in a year is 3.1536 into 10 power seven. Hence, the atomic clocks lose or gain no more than three microseconds in one year. Micro that is why a set that much accuracy is there. Variation is only 3 microseconds per year. No need to study all this calculation. It just shows it is the most accurate clock. No need to study that uh, derivations and all. Okay, next one. Next one, we have to study accuracy and precision. Now we have studied uh, measurement of length, measurement of mass, measurement of time. So that's our Next, uh, we when while measuring, some errors come, we know. Using different instruments, we get different, slightly changing the reading we are getting. And we are going to study about that. What is uh, error? What is an error? Do you know what is an error, children? Error, while measuring, for example, you are asked to measure the length of this rod. This error is given to you. And you are asked to measure its length. 
The actual length is given 32.56 millimeter. This rod's length. And the uh, two scales are given. Now see the least count of different two scales are different. Least count are different. Two point. On five six millimeter is measured using two different instruments. Okay, you can see how it is measured. Using the first instrument with a resolution of one millimeter, we obtain. What is the length, children? Look and tell. What is the length with this instrument? It is here. One point at zero, other point here. So, what is the length? Tell. Anyone? Please tell. 32. Ah, this is 32. Okay. Then another. As 32 millimeter. Measurement. Let us call this measurement M1. M1. This is M1. Okay. Using the second instrument with a resolution of 0 0.1 millimeter, we obtain the measured value as 32.5 millimeter. 32.5 millimeter. This one is M2. So two scales are used, children. With the one scale, we got 32 millimeter. The, with the other scale, which is more resolution, which have more resolution, see, in millimeters also is there. The other one millimeter was not there, only this bigger line. 29, after that, we have seen only this one. Then, uh, 30, oh, this one marked not correctly. Okay, 5 divided. 0 after 0, ah, 5 division is making 1. No, 5 division, not our... And um, scale, it is not like our scale, 5 division, 0 0.2 different, 2, see 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, then 1, da. not 1, 1 millimeter, 2 millimeters are there, 2 millimeters. So with that, the measurement is 32.5, okay, second measurement, children, then. Here, M2 is more accurate. As it, I will explain this. The actual length of the rod is 32.56. Actual length. And uh, with you are given two instruments. With one instrument, we got the reading 32 millimeter. With the other instrument, we got uh, somewhat more accurate than that. See, uh, here for 32.5. Here 32.56 is there. But here you got 32.5. So and it is near to this. And, uh, this is 32.5 actual length, but this value is very near to it, 32.5, but this is uh, far compared to the other one. So, which is more near children, which reading is more near, which reading is more near, I don't know, M2, ah, 32 point. Uh, M2. M2 reading is more near to this uh, actual reading. Actual reading. And that is why it is called more accurate, which is more near. So, we to, uh, call that reading as more accurate. So, the, so, if the reading we got is near to the actual value, we call it more accurate. The other one will be less accurate. Okay. Now, you understood. Which is more near, that is more accurate. Okay. It is closer to the object's true value than M1. Also, M2 is more precise. Ah, as the that one I will tell. Uh, we told 32.5 is more accurate. Then it is also more precise. What precision makes? Precision means that depends upon the resolution of the instrument. Here, up to one decimal place we were able to find with that second scale we used. So, this is having more, this is measured with another more precise instrument. Up to two decimal places we got the reading. Understand? For example, if you use one device, we got 32 only. Another device, we got 32.5. Still more precise measure, scale, if we measure... We get up to two decimal places. In another device, you may get three decimal places. That uh, denotes its uh, that resolution. Resolution is more. You consider these three readings. 
32, 32.5, 32.56, which is having more resolution. This is the most, uh, this reading is the most resolution instrument, which is measured with the most resolution instrument. Two, up to two decimal places we got. Still, if the instrument is more precise, we get three decimal places like that. So, uh, this reading is less precise, less accurate also. But this reading is more accurate and more precise. So, that is the difference between accuracy and precision. Usually, we uh, express both with the same meaning. But in physics, you know, it is different. Accurate means it is very near to the true value. The value is more near to the true value. That is accurate. But precise, that depends upon the instrument, resolution of the instrument. So, if it, the instrument is uh, having more higher resolution, the reading will be more precise. Higher resolution, more precise. Okay. The resolution of the instrument used is greater than that of the first one. Any quantity that is measured should be accurate and precise. Especially... Children, this instrument is known as vernier calipers. This is also used to measure length. So, here we get up to two decimal places, we get the reading 32.56, like that. Up to two decimal places we can correct with this instrument. If you, uh, see, you can see a main scale and a vernier scale, you can see vernier. Actually, if, uh, this is an experiment that is meant to do in lab. Measuring the height of a cylinder with the vernier calipers. Now, as we are not going to school, we are not able to do it. So, when the condition powers, we can do this experiment in lab. Actually, this is an experiment which we have to do in lab. So, this is a vernier calipers, and uh, this can be used to take measurement. And, and its measurement is more precise than the measurement taken with a scale. Up in third, uh, up 32.5, up to that only we can take in our meter scale, in our scale, in the scale which we use, we can write 32.5. Between 5 and 6, we, between 32.5 and 32.6, there is no such uh, line. So, 32.56, up to two decimal places, we can measure with this uh, vernier calipers. Scale, only one decimal place. Point 0.1, see? 1 millimeter, 1 millimeter, 0.1 centimeter. That is the resolution of our scale that we use. But you know, this one 0 0.01 centimeter is there. Okay, 0 0.01 centimeter. So this is where near calipers. In reality, however, measured values carry uncertainty. This uncertainty is called an error. Errors are classified as systematic errors. Oh, so what is error that you should know? So we have seen with a different measuring instrument, we are getting different reading, slightly changing reading. Higher the resolution, the result become more precise. So that means there is a error in it, uncertainty in the measurement, uncertainty in measuring a quantity, 32.5, one is 32, one is 32.5, other is 32.56, like that. So, if higher is the precision of the, uh, higher is the precision, resolution of the instrument, higher is the precision of the measurement, highly precise it becomes, high resolution, for example, microscope itself, High resolution microscope can measure more more precisely. We have to use the word precisely. More precisely and more accurately both will be there. So, uh, any measurement contains some uncertainty. That is known as error. Uncertainty in the measurement. That is called as error. Okay. For example, if, you, if I ask you to measure the length of the length of your notebook. See, well, children may tell different readings. Teacher, this is 17.5. Other will tell 17.6. Like that. 
So that depend that error is due to the person's error, or it may be due to the scales they are using. They may be using different types of scales. So depending upon the instruments, there may be error. Depending upon the persons, sometimes person may be careless. So there may be errors. So, so depending upon the situations, there will be possibility of error. Depending upon the instrument, depending upon the resolution of the instrument, depending upon the person, how he is taking the reading, all these things make errors in our reading. So the errors are of different types. We can see which are the different types of errors. Okay. And random errors. A systematic error is a unidirectional error. That is, it is either positive or negative. A systematic error can occur due to an imperfect instrument, a faulty measurement technique, or incorrect process of measurement. Okay, children, there are two types of errors systematic error and random error. So error I told you the uncertainty in measuring a quantity that is known as error and error is of two types systematic error and random error and systematic errors are possible due to these three reasons very important children. Uh, what is systematic error? It can be positive or negative and uh, what are the reasons? How will you correct that errors? So reasons for systematic errors. Imperfect instrument. Imperfect instrument means what? Sometimes the scale which you are using imperfect. How it becomes imperfect? Sometimes it may be worn out. The readings. Readings are not clear. If you are measuring the read, uh, the length of the book with the imperfect scale, that means the readings are worn out like the uh, scale may be broken if you use such instrument it may contain error that is the imperfect instrument error due to the imperfect instrument then another one faulty technique what is faulty technique not properly keeping for example measuring the length here you may keep zero here and measure that will be faulty technique or uh, so do for, for example measuring length measure, measuring mass you may not notice somebody was kept there in the balance without noticing you keep the you find the weight so faulty technique so in due to the faulty technique in measuring for example measuring the temperature of a body if you keep the temperature in the uh, armpit it may contain error. Actually, we keep the thermometer under our tank to measure whether fever is there or not. Usually, we keep the thermometer under the tank. Isn't it, children? So, uh, but if you keep under armpit, that may contain error. Faulty technique. Then, incorrect process. Process, you know, that, uh, that also must be correct. That means uh, you, uh, that bend on a bend ability is kept like that. Taking the reading of a, a measuring cylinder taken and uh, measuring the height of water level in a beaker. If your eye is not kept close to that, if the, the level of water and your eye must be at the same level. Like that you have to take the reading. Otherwise it may contain error. That is incorrect process. Or the jar may be kept on a, uh, not on a horizontal table, then also error comes like that. So incorrect process also make error. So what are the reasons for systematic error? Imperfect instrument, faulty technique, and incorrect process. The, due to all these processes, systematic error arise. Okay. Errors will occur due to the use of an imperfect instrument for measurement. Such errors are known as instrumental error. For example, if the needle of a simple balance is skewed or bent, bend, it always shows a weight that is more or less than the actual weight of the object being weighed. Errors may occur due to an imperfection in an experimental technique or procedure adopted while measuring. Temperature measurement. For example, Q 
keeping a thermometer under the armpit will not measure the body's exact temperature as the mercury bulb is exposed to external factors such as air in the room, humidity, etc. Errors may also occur due to an incorrect technique or procedure being followed while measuring values. Such errors are called personal errors. Parallax is one such error. While measuring the length of a line using a foot scale, if you tilt your head, the length measured will be shorter or longer by a millimeter or two. Systematic. So, this is personal error. So, when you take a reading, you see that uh, direct, direct uh, eyes, eyes must be uh, direct towards the reading, not bent position. Bent position, it may possess error. So, personal error. Yeah. errors can be minimized or eliminated by using a perfect measuring instrument and by improving the technique or procedure of measurement. Okay, see, how can you uh, reduce these errors? Imperfect instrument, how will you reduce using a perfect instrument? Then, uh, here experimental technique, instead of keeping the thermometer under the armpit, keep under the tank. That will be better. So, improving the experimental technique. And personal errors, the person should be very careful while taking the reading. Personal errors. The procedure can be improved. By all these methods, we can reduce error. Not eliminate, but reduce errors. Okay. Random errors are akin to what they are called random. These errors vary in terms of sign and size. That is, they can be either negative or positive, and the quantum of error varies in absolute terms. These errors can arise out of unpredictable situations, such as a sudden change in environmental conditions, voltage fluctuations, or mechanical vibrations in the experimental setup, etc. See, this vibrations, you can see the vibrations. Electronics can be minimized or eliminated by ensuring that... Or in electrical experiment, voltage fluctuation may change the reading. And in some experiment, this mechanical vibrations will change the reading. Due to that, the random errors. Random errors are unpredictable. We cannot predict when will the voltage fluctuation come. 